Hey, what's up everyone? It's Cameron again with Car Audio Now. I'm sitting in a 2023 Toyota Highlander today and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the key features and functions of this 12.3 inch infotainment center. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, a little bit about this vehicle first. You're looking at an infotainment center, a multimedia center for a 2023 Toyota Highlander. This is the limited trim with the 12.3 inch screen and multimedia system. It also has the 11 speaker JBL system with an, an included sub and amp. So it's the upgraded audio and multimedia system. Also included in this particular package is the safety sense with things like pre-collision, uh, the pre-collision system, dynamic radar, cruise control, radar departure, parking assist, 4G compatible network via you know a hotspot, Sirius XM and so on. So let me fire this thing up first and give you a look at what this system has to offer. So let's go ahead and turn the car on. So it's turning on. The first thing that you're gonna see when you turn the car on is this disclaimer. This shows up every time you turn on the car uh, for a few seconds. You can either bypass it by clicking on that continue button or it'll just disappear like it did. Now I've already set this car up uh, and linked it to the Toyota app. You can see it auto automatically went right now to the navigation. But when you purchase this vehicle new, it'll have a QR code that appears on the screen that you'll scan via the app. And then you're gonna click add a vehicle. And I'm talking about the Toyota app. I've already done that. If you don't see the QR code when you're trying to hook up the vehicle to your Toyota app, uh, if you purchase this vehicle used or for whatever reason it's not appearing, I'll show you how to do this when I get into the settings and the drivers a little bit later in this video. You can see up here, it also it connected to my iPhone automatically. I've already got this hooked up. And then it defaulted, it, it defaults to the CarPlay system uh, when it's connected here. Obviously, again, I connected my iPhone up to the unit and, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment as well. This is the first glimpse of, of what the 12.3 inch screen really does for you. It's super wide, which I actually like much more than the squared off screens, even if they're, they're you know horizontally larger. Uh, it maximizes the space on the dash too. It's, uh, the, the screen is crisp and clear. Uh, and what you see on the screen right now is the Apple CarPlay app screen. CarPlay and Android Auto are both wireless in the Highlander. So you don't need to plug in your phone into USB, although it does have a U one USB input, a traditional USB, and then two USB-C plugs for charging down below this unit. Uh, if you wanted to charge or if you wanted to connect a USB thumb drive, and I'll get into that uh, in a moment. And then it also has this wireless pad to place your phone on in this little cubby to allow it to wireless, wirelessly charge. You just place your phone on there and it starts to charge. A uh, nice feature to have. But the CarPlay interface on this Toyota is fantastic. The widescreen interface is really nice and actually presents more information in an easier to interact with easier to see design. You can see here that there's five apps across on this screen. On more slender or squared screens, this is actually normally only four across. You can access you know, your map apps of choice too, right? This is Google Apps that I'm showing you right now, but you could use Apple, Apple Maps, you could use Waze as well. And then, and even if, even here you can, you can see the benefit of the ultra wide screen. It's just much easier to see and allows more inf information than like a squared off screen would. Personally, I like it. You can also use your streaming music or music app of choice. This is kind of native to Apple CarPlay, but I'm using Spotify. You can see on the left here. Uh, but if you use Pandora, at Amazon Music, Apple Music, you name it. If the app is compatible with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're gonna be able to use it on this device. Below this on the left-hand side too is just the general interface uh, for making phone calls. You can see it shows your favorites, your recents, uh, your contacts in general, and then uh, voicemail and then a keypad here if you were also looking to just type in a phone number without pulling your phone out and dialing a phone number manually. I'll go back to the apps here and then when I click on the bottom left here again, you can see that the icon changed 
you're gonna find the dashboard. This is this is native functionality to Apple CarPlay. I'll go through it anyways though. But this dashboard shows you a combination of snippets uh, where you can get a look at where you're going while controlling things like your music, uh, what you're listening to, and so on. It has, you can see it has more of a dashboard look to it and combines information from multiple active apps into one interface here. But in general, nothing too noteworthy about CarPlay. Unfortunately, I don't have an Android phone right now, but you can expect a seamless Android Auto experience here as well. The interface in general is the same across all head units though. So you can expect a solid CarPlay and Android Auto experience on this Highlander uh, with the added benefit of this 12.3 inch wide screen. I didn't notice any connectivity issues so far or delays. Very consistent so far and easy to use. Um, so thumbs up on, on CarPlay. Now I'm going to go back to the native Toyota interface. I'll show you how to do that. You're going to go to the apps and then click on the Toyota app here. And that's going to get you back to the native functionality and interface of the car and out of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Below the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto icon, if you have your Android hooked up, is uh, the nav. What you see on the screen right now is the native GPS that comes with this Highlander. You can see your current position here where you are. It also allows you to do things like zoom in, zoom out, and then you can also change the orientation of the map to fix it to kind of like a true north no matter where you're going. Um, or you can or you can select it to point to whatever the location or, or the direction that the car is pointing to. Now, the GPS is included with the purchase of the vehicle for a period of time. Once that trial, trial or included period expires though, you're gonna have to pay for this interface. I think it's around $15 a month at the time of this video. To search for a destination or to, to go to a destination, you're gonna click on the search button here down at the bottom left, and it'll default to a voice command, which will allow you to speak the location that you're trying to go. I normally use the name of the location plus the city, and that typically works for me well. I've used it a couple times now and it seems pretty pretty accurate, but if you were looking to type in the location or voice recognition just for whatever reason isn't cutting it for you, you can tap on the search navigation button here and then you can type in the location. And I'll just do a quick sample here and, and search for you know Costco in my area. I'm gonna click go and it's gonna pop up uh, and I'm gonna select that location and then you can see how this will work. Uh, it gives you the route, it gives you ETA, any traffic along the way and then you can even share this location or destination via your connected device. This is gonna be via you know your iPhone or your Android that's connected. You can save it, uh, you can call that location if, uh, that you're looking to go to if that's available, right? All of these settings right here um, or you can you can uh, save it for a later later uh, time if you want to go to this location pretty consistently. I have to say that this interface is probably one of the more seamless navigation interfaces I've used in a native system from a usa usability standpoint. Very intuitive and feels like a Google Maps or or Apple Maps that many of you are probably really used to and and uh, have come to to use a lot. And then, uh, you know, I'll get into the, so I, I already mentioned the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, you could also just switch back to Android Auto or uh, CarPlay and use those native apps. You don't, you're not forced to use this if you don't want to. Now the next tab here below, looks like a music symbol, is where you're gonna find all your um, your audio sources and all the information about the audio or the music that, that's playing on the device. What you see here right now is via my Spotify, on Apple CarPlay, that was via the app that I showed you. Some of the high level information about the, the song, like the name of the song, the album, the artist, and then it allows you to get to control the music. You know, some of the, the standard and the same controls that you'd see probably in the app, basically things like shuffle, uh, repeat, next, previous play, and so on, some of the high level stuff. The search button down here on the far left, you can also use this to ask the system 
to play something in particular if you wanted to. Uh, you can you can tell it to play a song via an app or so on and it will normally play that. So you can also use the, the voice recognition. But if you click here on the sources button here, it'll open up another screen and that's going to show you all of the other options that you have to play music on both of your phone, your connected device, along with the app and you can see radio up there. So let's first let's talk about the radio. I'm going to go ahead and click radio. So this Highlander comes with HD radio and Sirius XM radio. Sirius obviously requires a subscription, but normally Toyota is going to include a year or a couple months for free when you purchase the new car. What you see on the screen right now is uh, the list of the favorites. These are stations that you'll favorite in your local area. You click on one of those um, and it'll take you to it, but it'll also allow you to edit the uh, favorites up on the top left. You can add or remove or re or shuffle and change where they are on, uh, you know, on the favorite lists. So I'm going to go back. But what I really liked about the radio on this unit is that the HD radio stations are categorized. I'm going to go into uh, the FM radio, and, and but before I do, you can you can tune tr like a traditional radio. But what's nice about this is when you go into the FM or AM radio, it's all categorized. So. This is particularly useful when you're traveling long distances, you go in and out of different areas and you might not be familiar with the local stations. But you can see all of the stations are categorized here by you know the, the genre of music. So uh, if you were to navigate to let's say country and here you are, uh, I'm in the Austin area, it's gonna show uh, all of the local country um, radio stations in in the Austin area and then if you navigate to one you can uh, obviously it's going to navigate to it and start playing but you can also favorite it by clicking on the heart button up here and that's going to put it into your favorites and that interface is the same with AM FM uh, AM AM radio and Sirius radio I'll just give you a quick look right it's categorized it's going to show you the different stations on AM Sirius this is what it looks like here as well. It's categorized, um, and then you can select the station. So pretty, pretty nice, um, very easy to use, and it's all categorized, which is is probably one of my favorite things about this radio. I'll tap the sources again here, and what I'm going to demonstrate next is actually a USB thumb drive. You can use an MSD or a mass storage device to play audio on this unit. It's compatible with most of the common audio formats. Um, I would take a look at the manual though if you're wonder, wondering about like a certain type or format of, of audio, something that, that might not be as standard, but for the most part, it's gonna, stand, it's gonna support all your standard audio formats. You can see on the screen here, KS uh, USB, that's my thumb drive, and I'm gonna go ahead and select it, and it's gonna take me to uh, the music that's on that device. It's gonna default to the first song. I think it's alphabetically. It shows the same, all the same information, about the you know the music as uh, what I just showed you when I was playing uh, music via Apple CarPlay you have the song the album really all of the metadata that's available on the song itself if it's on the file it's it's going to um it, it's going to show up here but what's different about this interface when you're on USB is this little browse button so if you want to browse through the files or the music on your your thumb drive you can just click on the browse button and then it's going to give you a list of categorized artists, albums, songs, genres, folders, and so on. You can navigate through your file. So if I were to just click on artists, you can see I only have two artists in here, but you can navigate through all of your artists alphabetically via this little shortcut bar here, which is pretty nice. Or if I go back, you can go into the folders directly and navigate the folder structure of your, your thumb drive to whatever song or folder that you're looking for that song in if that's if that's easier for you. On my device, I, I put it by album, uh, excuse me, artist and then album, so it's it's almost the same as what the default um, categorization is on, on this device. But it's worth noti noting that this device and, and just in the Highlander and probably Toyota in general, this isn't gonna play multimedia, it's not gonna play videos via a thumb drive. This is only compatible right now with, with audio files.
The next option here on the left is the phone tab. This is actually going to default back to your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto phone feature unless you're using Bluetooth and then it's gonna have its own you know, favorites and contacts and keypad interface. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that one. You've already seen it. But the, the icon below the phone is the, uh, the vehicle settings and the vehicle data. So when you click on this, the first thing at the very top is climate control. Uh, if you don't like the manual interface that's down below the infotainment system, this is an option for you to control and look at what's going on. It gives you a more comprehensive look and you know a, a easier to use, easier to see interface probably is, is a better way to describe it. You can, you can see uh, we're selected on the, the front area of the car. So all the controls that you're seeing on the right are uh, specific to the front section and you're gonna go ahead and use this interface to change or see what the airflow is set the fan you can turn AC on or off you can uh, sync it with the back right you can change where the airflow is going to uh, you can control the AC in the front section but if you wanted to also go to the rear specifically you can just click on the rear and then you can set up the rear climate control via the interface directly from the screen too pretty handy you can also do that below via the buttons uh, if you didn't want to go into the the uh, touch screen in the interface and then on the option screen at the bottom you're going to see two options one is an eco button which will uh, more economically I would say cool your vehicle helps uh, give your AC unit a little bit more life and longevity it's easier on on your AC and then below that you have the de-icer for the windows if it's if it's if you have ice right now if I go back to vehicle below the climate you're gonna see trip information in this interface it'll show you things like your current fuel economy your average speed trip range duration and so on just information about really your driving habits and and your your speed and and fuel economy uh, mainly your fuel economy here and so you can see your current or you can see historical you can clear your data and when you clear the data it's going to restart or if you go to history you can see your average mile per gallon and then you can clear the data or if you click on the update update it kind of it serves as a reset and then it's going to add another bar to your chart here so you can kind of see trending over time every time you update this go back to vehicle below the trip information you'll see all-wheel drive this section shows you the distribution of power while you're driving I'm in park so it's not going to show anything right now and then below the all-wheel drive you'll see vehicle alerts where if there's an error or something on the vehicle an alert of any kind you're gonna see those alerts here think of this as more of like a message board than anything where your vehicle is gonna show all the alerts in this section um, so that's pretty much it though for for the vehicle section here so let's get into the settings now that's the gear icon at the bottom left of the screen now when you turn your car on you can see current driver is guest now back to the initial setup and hooking this up to your app, I was talking about this earlier. If you purchased this car used or somehow you got disconnect, disconnected this vehicle from your Toyota app, this is where you're gonna go to, to try to reconnect and configure your app and tie the vehicle to from the app um, to your, your infotainment center. You're gonna go down into the, the info and security section and then you're gonna click on the system reset and that's gonna allow you to kind of create new drivers again it's gonna generate a new QR code I, I won't go into too much detail I, I actually did this myself but it'll allow you to generate that QR code and tie it back to your app now one quick thing to notice you have to be logged in as the primary driver in order to in order for this system reset to be functional so if you drive the vehicle off the lot you can't get to that qr code or there's another primary driver you purchase this car used make sure that the previous owner has reset the the configuration before you drive it drive it away it'll make it a lot easier to connect this to the toyota app but back up to the drivers 
when you do set up your drivers, you'll be able to select which profile you want to use. And those profiles will be tied to whatever configuration and settings that I'm going to go through. You can, you can set different configurations of the vehicle in the setting tabs and tie them to a profile. And then you can se select that profile while you're driving. So let's go through some of those settings here. First on the list below the driver is personal info. This just shows you the information of the driver that you're selected right now. It's guessed, so there's nothing here, but if I selected mine, it's gonna show some information about me. Nothing too special. Uh, below that though is the Bluetooth and devices. This is where you're gonna add or remove the devices that, um, that you're gonna want quick access to while you're in the car. These are probably the devices, any device that kind of comes in and out of this vehicle, vehicle frequently um, or whoever drives the car, you're gonna probably wanna add those devices here. You can pair up to five different devices, but only use one at a time. This is also where you're gonna turn on CarPlay and Android Auto by default. You can you can uh, turn it on or off. If you turn it off, it's gonna to default to the Bluetooth. If you turn it on, every time that it connects to that device, it's gonna use CarPlay by default. Go back to settings. Below Bluetooth and devices is the general tab. In here, there's really only two things. One is the screen beep toggle. So you can turn off the beep. Right now, every time that I click on something, you you don't hear that beep anymore. I'll keep it off for for now. The second one is screen sensitivity. So if you're using gloves or something like that, and you need the screen to be more sensitive to your touch for whatever reason, it's not working. You can use this to crank up the sensitivity and and try to get it to be more functional for what for for you if you wear gloves or something like that. Below accessibility, date and time. This is where you're gonna set your date and time for the unit, or just set it to GPS, which is what I did. I have it set auto uh, to auto, which is gonna use your location to set the the uh, the time. So I don't I don't have to touch this, you know. Um, but you could enter it manually. Uh, you can see once I turn that off, you can go in and, and set up that you know the clock manually. I just keep it on GPS. That works for me. Simplifies sim simplifies it. Below date and time, you have keyboard. All of this is uh, really, all this is is really a history of some of the things that you may have searched for using the keypad functionality in this infotainment system. You know, for example, maybe in the navigation or other way, other areas of the unit, you can clear the search history, anything that you've really typed in. Um, this is where you clear that history. And then finally down in the general settings, the language and units. This area allows you to set the language of the unit uh, along with the unit of measure for the, the system in the car. If you don't have it set automatically, I'll set it to automatically right now, you can see that goes away. If you set it automatically, it's going to use GPS to you, and it's going to default to things like English and miles uh, per hour, right? Miles. But if you don't want to do that, you'd rather it be uh, kilometers and uh, liters, right? You can go in and you can set that uh, if you do move this car, let's say up to, to Canada or somewhere else that might use kilometers versus miles. I'm going to go ahead and just set it automatically. And I'm going to go back to the settings here. And the next one on the list under general is notifications. On the notification tab, you can enable or disable a variety of notifications that the head unit or the system is gonna give you while driving. You can see most of these, you know, software updates, vehicle suggestions, virtual assistant right on the top, but a lot of these are navigation. Things like turn by turn, traffic alerts, and state border guidance. You can toggle any of these on or off. Below notifications, you have Wi-Fi. This Highlander has two Wi-Fi related features. One is hotspot. You can connect directly to the hotspot of this vehicle. If this is turned on, it gives you the information of the hotspot, like the, uh, the name of the hotspot, the password, the security type, right? This feature requires a subscription and a data plan in order to enable it, but would act like any other hotspot that you would use and give you access, internet access while you're on the road or really anytime you're in the vehicle. The second feature here is Wi-Fi. This is used more for notifications and over the air software updates. So when this is turned on, you're gonna select 
Now, th this is connected to my car CarPlay right now, which is why you're seeing this, but um, you can't be connected to Wi-Fi and CarPlay at the same time. They, use, they both use Wi-Fi. But when that's enabled, you just select the Wi-Fi. You could be in your garage and select your 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 home Wi-Fi, type in the password. It's gonna connect the device to that Wi-Fi and internet. And this is really used for software updates more than any anything, vehicle software updates of, of the infotainment system. So you connect to your local Wi-Fi, enable the vehicle um, to automatically update its software, or you'll, you'll go into the settings, and I'll show that to you in a minute. But Wi-Fi, that allows you to really update any if there's any updates to the software here you're gonna go in here enable Wi-Fi and then you're gonna go into the settings and, and click on software updates and it'll download and install them so go back to settings display is next a couple things in here you can first you can turn on and off the display via this toggle toggle excuse me let's say you're driving at night though the screen is too bright your passengers asleep uh, or you have kids in the back it's too bright for whatever reason. You toggle this and it's gonna turn the screen off. When the screen turns off, the, all you have to do to, to turn it back on is tap on the screen and it's gonna, it, it's gonna come back. But it's nice to have. You can also control the display brightness and contrast here or set it to do, uh, you know, do this automatically via the automatic button. But you can also adjust the brightness and contrast manually. And then below the screen, you have camera. This is all the cameras on the vehicle that show on the screen when you're in reverse or you know the, the, the security, like the 360 camera system comes onto screen. You can set the brightness of those, those camera, the image and the contrast too. And it gives you kind of a, 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 an understanding of like what the, your changes, how your changes are gonna impact the colors when you, when you change these, right? So um, I'm just gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna go back to settings. Now below display, let's go to sound and media. Now in the sound and media tab, you can control various aspects of the audio. In the levels section, it will allow you to automatically adjust the volume based on your driving screen, that the driving speed, that's what's selected here. If that's turned off, basically it's gonna, it's gonna emit one, you know, the same volume level even if you know the same as as uh, when you're going 80 miles an hour as it would if you're stopped at a stoplight this will adjust that volume it'll get a little bit louder when you go faster right i'm just gonna leave that that on you can turn that on or off then below that you can independently set up the volume for things like ringtone when someone calls so it doesn't blare while you're listening to music loud same with you know new messages and and volumes and below that you can control the system voice right that's uh, basically the the voice system if if you're using voice recognition and the sa uh, the the volume of her voice his or her ver voice and the, you know the driving assistant while you're driving underneath the levels you have sound tuning this system has a three band equalizer pretty standard treble mid and bass nothing special if you wanted to have more control over your your system here you're gonna have to do it through your uh, music device your phone or the app that you're playing music on it does have balance and fade here below very simple and standard as well you kind of tap on or, or click and drag the area that you want the audio to focus on and it's going to lower the volume outputs and the areas outside of that focus when you do that it this unit doesn't have like a sound stage you know configuration it's really just limited to the the bass and you know this three band equalizer so pretty straightforward though in the media section below here this will let you select the default source for your music and whether or not uh, to display the cover art for whatever song you're playing cover art here is just uh, it just refers to the image that shows on the screen when you're playing a song you cut you probably saw that when i was playing um, music from apple carplay and from the usb thumb drive you saw the album art and that's all that that is go back to settings again and let's go into navigation now. In the navigation settings, you can customize the native GPS navigation interface, and, and that's what this is referring to. It's not the interface for Apple CarPlay. You can do things like add or remove the speed limit, show or hide traffic incidents, show or hide different points of interest and so on. Basically, this is just adding and removing some of the on-app and on-screen items while you're kind of driving and using that GPS navigation functionality that I showed you. In the routing options here, 
you can place guardrails around how the navigation maps you to a destination. For example, if you wanted to go somewhere and you wanted to avoid tolls because you knew that it probably isn't that much further and you didn't want to pay for the tolls, you could toggle this option and when it goes to route you to that location, it's going to avoid tolls and, and, and uh, take you around tolls. Uh, just don't forget to untoggle that if you're looking to get somewhere quick and you don't mind paying for tolls, obviously. But you can do things like avoid highways, avoid ferries, avoid seasonal roads, and avoid border crossings, those sort of things. It's going to omit those like paths when you go to, you know, go to route that destination. Again, this is only for the native navigation on the unit. The next one is the vehicle customized settings. So this is kind of a cool one. Uh, you can control some of the car features here. For, for the first one in the light section, you can, you can control the sensitivity of the auto headlights. So, you know, let's say you want it to turn on earlier in, in the evening, right? You can set that to be more sensitive. The lights will come on a little bit earlier. You can also set up the auto off timer. You can turn off the running uh, daylight, daytime running headlights things like that and then you know below that it, you can also turn or change the the exterior and interior light timers so when you exit the vehicle how long does it take for those lights to turn off i'm sure all of you have experienced this at one time you've looked back at your lights and asked yourself did i leave the lights on right but so you can set those that timing to be 15 seconds you can turn it you know off uh 30 seconds seven and a half seconds right uh, you can do that for both the exterior and interior lights so that when when you close the door lock the vehicle it's only going to take 15 seconds for all those lights to turn off you know that after 15 seconds something's wrong similarly here in the door controls here you can set up how auto lock functions so in this setting you'll see it'll lock it's set to sh it's so auto lock is set to shift from park and auto unlock is set when I shift to park right so what that means is when I turn on the vehicle and then I shift out of park into drive or reverse it's going to lock the, the the doors you can change that to a speed or something else or turn it off and then the same with auto unlock so it will automatically unlock when I shift the car back into park that way the doors are unlocked when I go to open them up and you know the the car is in park it's part of safe part safety part you know preference but you can you can control those and the climate control it's pretty limited here basically this one toggle that you see you can enable AC in the auto auto mode so when you turn the AC, the the climate control into auto what this does is it enables AC when it's in auto or you can you can turn it off too so that when it does go into auto um, it'll never turn the AC unit on in this vehicle so pretty pretty straightforward go back here now the bottom one uh, or well under vehicle customize voice and search this has two things to toggle one is to enable what's called a wake word so if you say hey Toyota it's going to enable voice recognition and prompt the prompt will show up now I'm assuming that didn't happen because I also have my phone to uh, plugged in here but you can turn that wake word on or off so that it's enabled or it's disabled if you want to use that hey toyota wake word you you'll keep this toggled on and that's going to allow you to basically keep on driving without touching anything the voice recognition is going to come on screen and you're going to tell it what to do you can tell it to go to a destination to play to play a song without even touching the steering wheel because the steering wheel has voice recognition a button here to enable that you don't even have to do that all you have to do is say the wake word to, to get the voice prompt to, to come to come up and then the voice prompt talking about speaking of voice prompt when the voice prompt does come up on the screen normally it talks to you uh, it asks you a question it asks you what would you like to do you can turn that voice prompt off and just change that to a beep so that when you do enable uh, voice recognition the prompt just gives you a quick beep to uh, to acknowledge that it's listening versus it asking you what would you like to do so you can turn that on and off here 
The last few here on the left under vehicle are pretty straightforward. I'm gonna breeze through them. The first is dealer info. Set up your local dealer with a phone number. This will streamline contacting them if you use voice control uh, and ask it to call your dealer. It'll also just give you the information if you needed to type it in, right? Below that, info and security. I showed you this, but you can lock the unit and require a password by toggling this you'll type in a password to set that password and every time this comes on or you want or somebody wants to control something on the screen they're going to have to type in that lock and that passcode that you type in here so it just adds a little bit of safety underneath that software updates this is where you're going to update the software when you're connected to wi-fi i talked about how you connect this device to wi-fi and if there's an update for the the car you can see there's no updates available right now it's already been updated but if there is an update this is where you're gonna to go to, to update the unit. You're gonna click it, it's gonna download it from Wi-Fi and install it onto the vehicle, which is pretty nice. And then below that, the last one is apps. Uh, you can reinstall all of the app data and set up the remote connect here too. I won't get into uh, this in, in too much detail, but you, this is where you'll navigate to. Reinstall all the apps and set up the remote connect as well. So that's everything I, I had to show you. I hope this walkthrough was helpful and I covered everything that you uh, you were looking to see about the, the 2023 Highlander. Overall, you know, I really like this system. One of the better OEM interfaces I've used, uh, to be honest, and, and better than most of the aftermarket ones I've reviewed too on my channel. If I didn't cover something here specifically, please feel free to post a comment down below. I'll try to answer it. Uh, and as always, do me a favor and subscribe to our channel to keep me putting videos like this together for you. Thanks for watching.